Gracias. Um, hola, buenas. Y este es uh, todo que puedo decir en español. <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, speak about uh, contributing to WordPress core. Um, and I will um, explain some of the, uh, what you need to be aware of when you are interested in contributing to WordPress core, which is the software WordPress itself. And um, I will do that in form of basically telling a bit of how I, my own story or how I got to do that and um, what I learned across the way so that if you are interested in that you hopefully have an easier path and have some of the or you know what to expect basically. So um, before we start with that there's just a few quotes by other core um, contributors and how why is this beneficial why can this be beneficial for you like Contributing to core, uh, or generally contributing to any area of WordPress, can really um, it can boost your career. It can give you job opportunities, but it gives you it also can give you an environment of people that you work with. If, even if you're, for example, if you're a freelancer, you may, might be working by yourself a lot. But then contributing, you make lots of new um, connections with other people who you can collaborate with, which is a very valuable experience. But then also, and you can make friends from all over the world. Like at work camps like this, you can meet them, and um, it just it just has given me really a lot. And also, there are some other ideas from other people here. So it actually, for me personally, it all started at WordCamp Europe 2015. Um, if you were around in the WordPress community, you might know that it was right here in Sevilla. So it was my very first WordCamp, WordCamp Europe in Sevilla 2015. And uh, so uh, Sevilla uh, tiene un lugar especial en mi corazón. <laughs> <laughs> y, um, so, and um, I, I went to the Contributor Day and we have a Contributor Day tomorrow here as well. So I, because I'm a developer, I just thought, yeah, okay, I try to contribute to the WordPress core. And it was a court table. Um, I was sitting somewhere there. You can't see me, but there's an arrow. Um, and uh, I was, the court table was led by Konstantin Obenland, who was the lead of the release, which was WordPress 4.3 at the time. And there was the task to uh, test the heck out of the uh, site icon feature. If you remember, there was, a, there was this feature in WordPress which introduced the icon to have on the, on the page and that was the ma major part of this release. So it was only about testing and testing and testing and finding one small bug and fixing it. And I did find one small bug and fixed it. It was just like 10 lines of code or five lines of code. But by the end of the day, it was committed and I got my first props. So this is my username and I'm like, woohoo! I, I have got props on contributing to WordPress which also had my, that means that now your name is in the list of people who have contributed to WordPress, which was like, wow, that's amazing, <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, so it was, I was really excited about that. So I was so excited that I went back to the hotel later and I worked on another thing already. Um, but it was a very great experience starting. So I really recommend that you, if you're interested in that, you should try it, attend to contribute today at the WordCamp, like, like tomorrow. Um, you can also try doing starting this at home. It's definitely it's definitely possible, but you have to be really mo motivated. You have to look everything up yourself. But in a contributor day, there are experienced people who can help you and answer your questions and immediately. They have great great feedback, and they can also provide you good tasks to work on that are easier to get into. So after this. Um, I, yeah, I, I contributed a little occasionally and uh, usually at WordCamps and other contributor days. So this is a picture of WordCamp Berlin in 2015. 
Um, but so it was mostly still WordPress, uh, WordCamp related. I did not contribute in my free time at home at this point. Um, but then uh, at some point I opened an issue. I think it, uh, WordPress does not use uh, GitHub, as you might know. It used like an old system called Track. Um, and I, that was the first ticket I had opened. It was just a small bug, it doesn't really matter. So I got a very welcoming response first, welcome to track, that was really nice. But then the ticket was closed. And uh, the good thing is, I got a very elaborate response why it was closed. So I guess I could understand. But sometimes if you don't have make that experience, sometimes you just have see like this is closed. And why? There's no response. That can easily happen. And that was, it, it happened to me uh, too. It's, it's a very um, important, you have to be aware that this can happen and you have to ask why. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're really confused why this was closed, you should not just be frustrated and stop. You, should, you can comment again on, even on the closed ticket, like, can you give me a reason why this was closed? Sometimes the people who, who on the other side, they're of course very busy, like we all are, and they, sometimes you tend to forget to give an uh, elaborate response, which is of course not good, but it happens. So you, we need to um, follow up. It's very important that you follow up and if there, it, some things can easily be frustrating, but don't, don't just get frustrated. Um, then, but then there were also very rewarding parts. So at some point I wrote a very simple class and there was, the class was introduced into WordPress core and I was like, whoa, now I introduced the class into WordPress core. It was very simple, but it was very, it was very motivating. So you have, of course you have both sides as always. And there are a few things you have to keep in mind when you want to prevent frustration as much as possible. So a lot of work contributing to WordPress is not writing code. It's discussing how to approach a problem, how to solve a problem. Um, if, or if you have an idea of something that should be in WordPress, you have to ask yourself, um, is this really something that will benefit the majority of users or is this only something that will benefit me and a few people? Like, um, you have to know the, learn the WordPress philosophies, what, what the project goals are, what the project stands for. For example, it is very focused on the user. It's not as much focused on the developer, which is sometimes a shame for me, but it's the way it is. Um, and to some degree, it also makes sense. And really communicate. Communicate is very important. Uh, ask, ask questions if, you're, if you don't understand why something was decided the way it was decided. And if you still disagree, sometimes it really just helps stepping back and coming back later. And maybe you have changed your mind, maybe you haven't, but then you have definitely, the, like the initial level of really being angry or frustrated has gone away after a bit. There's a great article that on the, on the web that I will have the slides online later so you can actually click on them or you can Google that. It's a great article by Andrew Nason, which is pretty much what I'm speaking about here. What, how to, what, to, what values are, what, um, what, what traits are valuable as a core contributor. Yes, and like I said, they uh, always follow up and really important it is do not take anything personal so the other person who is, who is who you're chatting to and on the ticket or on Slack, they probably don't know you, especially when you're new. So why would they be mean to you? There's no sense, like, it, there's no sense in it. But sometimes you think like, that is really rude that they close my ticket or re reject my patch or, but it's, it doesn't make sense. It, there's, always some, there's always some argument behind that and that's why you should follow up and try to not be frustrated, which is of course easier said than done, but um, you get the gist. And there was also a great talk about that at a WordCamp US a couple years ago, um, which I can really recommend to watch as well on WordPress TV. So WordCamp US 2015 um, was for me the next big step. I, I attended that and uh, there was um, I was working for a big a multi-site client and um, I had seen a talk about multi-site by um, John James Jacoby, JTrip, you might know him from, he's a BuddyPress, one of the creators of BuddyPress. And um, so I talked to him at the WordCamp and, I, and then at some point he said, this team is really small, so if you're interested in it, just go contribute to it. And I was like, 
okay. Uh, so a few days later, I signed. Up, I went on Slack and joined that tech channel for the team, the multi-site team. And I didn't really do anything, but I just read some some of the chats there and saw what they were talking about. And I generally followed a little bit what was going on. So at some point, I was working on a ticket that uh, where I didn't get any response after a while. So then I actually decided to join a meeting. They have a weekly meeting. And first I just said, I'm, I want to help. I, I need, yeah, I, where can I help? And then I also said, I want, please give me feedback on this ticket. I have been waiting for a couple of weeks. So the first response I got was this. And the second response was this. <laughs> so the gist was that this it's a very old ticket, it's really complicated, and um, nobody wants to touch it because it's so hard to solve. <laughs> and um, by the way, the ticket is still open as of today. This was more than two years ago, and uh, nothing has been done ever since, pretty much. And if I had known that back then, that it would be open today, I would have quit. <laughs> but, but I learned to step back and and see like live live with it there there were there are other priorities for the project than fixing this ticket i wanted to work on and sometimes this happens and um in that case you can either you can either be um really persistent and you want to you will you will can basically say you can huh? okay you can you can basically say that um that I want to just do it myself. Like you can, you can, you can own the ticket and everything that that, that resolves around it and move it forward. But that is of course a very ambitious uh, undertaking. But but then um, the or you can just step back and so for me my mindset at this point is it will have its time. I don't know when. It's definitely a valid point and problem in WordPress. And at some point, somebody will be like, okay, now we need to fix it and I will be happy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you have to learn to step back and yeah, that happens. There's a, great, there's a great YouTube short film, which is really ridiculous. It's about, it's all, again about following up. You always have to follow up and be persistent when contributing. Some, so when you don't get a response, when you get a negative response and you don't know why, always ask and ask and communicate and discuss and follow up. Don't just open a ticket and, and then never look at it again and hope that somebody will fix it. Um, this, this, street, uh, this, uh, this short film on YouTube is amazing. It's produced like remote work. There are two people who made that movie who never met. <laughs> So something else I really got out of them going into the multi-site meetings is that I found my focus. Since then, I've mostly contributed to the multi-site part of WordPress, which has been really valuable. Um, not specific that it's multi-site, but just finding a focus. Because as, as we know, you can't be an expert in every area. You have to specialize. So I built more and more expertise in multi-site over the time. And then the other advantage you have is that you only deal with a few people there. Like if you contribute to 20 areas of WordPress core, you deal with 20 people and it's really hard to make an impression, to make an impact, to, to, to have someone of these people know you because of course you're splitting all your available time across 20 different parts. But when you put all your efforts, almost all your efforts into one, there's just one or two people who lead this component and if you make an impact with them, they can really elevate you in, to the next level because they, the leaders of the components usually ha already have like a more, they're more known in the community. And of course, it's sometimes it's bad that, but that you have to, you have always have to build trust in order to move bigger efforts forward, but that's how we work, I guess. So you, yeah, you need to, um, invest, 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 and at some point you will get it back, but then it's going to be really beneficial. It's a long term, it's a process that can take a couple of months or maybe a years. Yeah, um, it's usually not a good idea to focus on a very old ticket. That what I learned too, like that ticket was really complicated and bad. <laughs> so at some WordCamp later in 2016, I, I, I heard that there were a call for component maintainers 
which is like a component is out of all these parts in WordPress, where you find also a list on make WordPress.org core. And uh, there was a call for them and I was like, um, okay. Um, I looked, for the, looked through all the components and I saw there's this post thumbnails featured image, it's also called component. It is the smallest component of WordPress core. There were only five open tickets and there was no maintainer. I thought, okay, this is just the smallest component. I, I will ask if I can be a maintainer of it. And I, I did and that was okay. I became a maintainer. But looking back, it kind of didn't make sense because I didn't care about post thumbnails at all. Um, so uh, it, it was important that you, it's important. So what I learned about is, is generally, you have, you have to make a step. You have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to, if you, if you want to move forward, you have to make an effort. So you can, you can ask, can I become a, a component maintainer of the REST API component or of the post component or any part of WordPress? And this is what moves you, what can move you forward. You have to make the effort. Of course, sometimes people will recommend like, hey, this person should become a component maintainer. But most of the time, it's going to be you that has to move themselves forward. Um, so when you do that, do that better than me. Don't pick the smallest component just because it's the smallest component. You can, the REST API, for example, is a big component. But if you're interested in REST API, you should pick the REST API as your component um, just because that's your expertise. It doesn't make sense to do something else just because it's small. Don't, don't think you can't ma handle that because it's too big. You just have to go and learn and grow with it. So as a component maintainer, you're now, it's a little later in the process, you're now on the receiving, on the other end, where you have to feel, make new contributors feel welcome and try to ensure that they don't get frustrated. And the, so you're basically now on the other side a little bit. And it's very important, especially as a component maintainer, to not only to have, you always have to see it in the full picture. You have to uh, manage the tickets that come in. And of course, really important, don't, you have, you have to focus on other people's tickets. That is a general thing. You don't just move forward your own tickets. That will not bring you far in the on the long term um, and of course also you can now you you now have capabilities to milestone tickets to say like this trick ticket should be part of WordPress 5.0 for example but if you do that do it reasonably not like I open a ticket and I immediately put it in 5.0 because it's my ticket that doesn't work like that that shouldn't work like that um, yeah, the most important part as a component maintainer is that you now have to make new people feel welcome because really everyone, in, and be aware of that, everyone who is a core contributor, they want new people to help because we need more people to help always. So WordCamp Europe 2016, um, at that WordCamp I personally, I finally met uh, some of the people who were also part of the multi-site team where I had been contributing, collaborating with before. And uh, it was really great to meet the people in person, to have like, get, get to know the people behind just the names and avatars. And it was also very productive to talk about some of the issues in person. Um, it, and last but not least, yeah, you make friends from all over the world um, and have beer with them and ha hang out with them in person. And that's just amazing that you can get that out of you. So I'm gonna uh, skip a little bit. Uh, timing wise. So I was in the time I was working on uh, my thesis at the university. So what I did eventually is I contributed much to WordPress core because I didn't want to work on my thesis. And um, the final day that, that I had before I had to hand it in, I got the message on Slack or like out of the blue. Uh, I was, whoa, I can be a core committer. Okay. I was, that was completely overwhelming for me. And uh, but yeah, I was, I was, I couldn't sleep that night anyway, because I had to pat, give in my, give my thesis in the next day. And then I got this and it was over. I could not sleep now forever. Like, so I, I, uh, at that night, I, I, w I stayed up and then I read through the core contributor handbook because I'm a German and I need rules for everything. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it was really exciting for me that I, I thought I did not, I was not at that level, but I got core commit and that's really what happens. Like, um, 
you just you, you always underestimate yourself that and you you just have to be more vocal get out of your comfort zone and and things will also come back to you and give be, and so you will get something out of it so at the next work camp i did my first um commit and especially after being a committer i learned a few additional things that are also really valuable though if you're not um, you always have to consider edge cases in WordPress because it's so badly written the whole thing if you if you change something here something can break somewhere there and you have to become familiar over time with how it works but especially if when you're new to it you have to um, trust the more experienced contributors if they say like here this, there's something that breaks um, they have that knowledge built that knowledge over a long time um, and really always be precise, communicate, communicate. That's the most important part. And um, so afterwards, I was, uh, I was traveling for a bit to attend other work camps and uh, started working on more projects and more parts of WordPress core at some point. Um, like we started to having a PHP group in WordPress where we want to move forward. Uh, people finally getting to newer PHP, PHP versions so that WordPress can, now, can become more secure. And most imp uh, really important, what I was find, found out at some point there was that I have to be reasonable. You have to be reasonable with your time. Because at some point I picked up too many tasks and I'm, I was doing that still in my free time. And um, I, yeah, I, I was doing that still in my free time so I had to manage it a little better. So what can happen because I, was, because I was contributing so much, earlier this year, I became part of Team Yoast. So I got this fancy avatar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they now part-time sponsor me for working on course. So now I can do what I did before, but I can do it confidently and put more time in it than I did before. And that can happen to you by, by contributing, by not, but not only to core, even to all the other areas. Like, People get, get to know who you are, maybe even if they have never met you, they know of you, and you can get job opportunities like that. So, yeah, if you want to increase your core time, companies are, there are many companies that are looking for people to sponsor in that area. So, that's it for my story at this point. I'm really interested if you are, um, yeah, where the next part of my journey will take me, but I'm really interested to hear some of your stories if you are interested in doing so like what what your experiences will be and i'm happy to talk about this further um i will be here today and the rest of and tomorrow and happy to um answer questions and uh, also uh, espero uh, encontrar mucha gente de, de la comunidad español uh, E, yeah, I hope, I hope with this talk I've been able to take some of the pain points away that you might have in the future or that you already ran into and uh, here's just a quick summary of it, everything and that's it for me. Gracias. Yeah, qu question? Ah, oh, yeah. Um, so the question is, how, yeah, how, how Slack communities are managed? Um, so they, um, you, you can, um, there's, there are local Slacks, so I'm sure there's a Spanish Slack team, but then there's also an international Slack team, and the international Slack team is where, for example, core discussions take place, and there are many teams, for example, there's a core multi-site team and core REST API, and you can just go in there, and there's a, on, on the website, makewordpress.org, there's a work, makewordpress.org slash meetings. It will have a list of all the weekly meetings of all teams, when they are, and it's really, if you're interested in one specific area, the best thing you can do is 
just attend one of these meetings and um, see and, and maybe you don't even have to say something you, you can just say hi in the beginning of every meeting everyone just do, does the emoji of the yeah. wave and yeah and uh, you can just you see what they are talking about and then you can figure out what's important for the moment and if you're comfortable doing that at some point you can just say I, I want to help how can I help and it's yeah I, Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, I was asking about uh, when you have a meeting at 7 p.m. Uh -huh. this, this kind of meeting that, that you have uh, done it, you are uh, taking, uh, how, how, how works this? <laughs> I'm expanding. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm not talking about no? John, John yeah. and yeah, yeah. talking to the people that there are. I'm asking about the, the special meetings that you have in the core or design or. No, 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 y básicamente normalmente se prepara un, una pequeña agenda antes de la reunión que se suele circular, incluso se, se hace un post en, en el mail entonces eso se circula unos días antes cuando llega siempre hay un líder que es un poco el que va gestionando esa agenda eh, se empiezan a hablar de esos temas, se van sacando temas, se van cerrando temas ¿vale? y normalmente se intenta abrir e intentando cerrar temas y normalmente las reuniones duran una hora de reloj, o sea, empiezan a hablar en punto y a la hora en punto acaban. Y luego se hace una recopilación de toda la información de la meeting, o sea, en el Slack no hay ningún problema, y se convierte en post con detalles. Y entonces se suele hacer un resumen de, de dónde venimos, a dónde vamos y qué es lo que se va a intentar hacer en la siguiente. <risa> Okay, yeah. <laughs> Gracias.